some pride It's so live Being where you're from We don't got nothing to hide It's so live Being where you're from It's a part of me still Being where I'm from You just gotta be proud Being where I'm from They let the smoke come in quicker It's so fly Being where I'm from They let the smoke come in quicker It's so live Being where I'm from We don't got nothing to hide It's so right, being where I'm from, it's a part of me still, being where I'm from, you just gotta be real, being where I'm from, come on out to the Bungalow Bar, located at 377 Beach 92nd Street in Rockaway Beach, New York, located right on the corner of Beach 92nd Street and Beach Channel Drive, come and enjoy our choice of dine-in service with beautiful views of Jamaica Bay and a breathtaking sunset view. Or enjoy our takeout service and no contact delivery as well. Either way you decide to dine, you will be satisfied with our famous American style cuisine, great drinks and great service. Brought to you by IGC Hospitality, the staff at Bungalow Bar hope to see you real soon. Now, enjoy your scheduled program, Buck the System with Buck and Fox. When the cameras aren't rolling and the spotlight is off, what are your favorite celebs really like? This is Buck the System, the podcast that peeks behind the curtain, under the covers, and brings you along as host Buck Gritano exposes real reality. We started with the captains of the smash hit TV show Wicked Tuna. How cool is that? And every time we buck the system, we have an awesome time doing it. So now, let's have some fun. Are you ready? Buckle up and let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to Buck the System Podcast. As I muted myself, you know, that, whatever. Uh, right. Buck Fox here, alongside Wicked Tunis, one of his, the OG members, OG. back to season, all the way back to season one, Mr. Dave Carrero, uh, Fat Tuna, I'm going to say Fat Tuna, hear me? Tuna.com. I had them guys on the show last time, and kind of threw me off because season 10, I, it's, it's absolutely amazing, season 10 already, man. How you doing, Dave? Good. How's it going? Uh, awesome, man. Awesome. I can't Always a pleasure. Always I can't believe you guys are up to season 10 already, man. To, I, how, how is it possible to be even to fish for, that, for 10 seasons? How is that even possible? It's been a long, it's been a long time. Like, you know, when we started the show, we, were, we didn't know if we were going to get beyond one season. And here we are 10 seasons later and another seven seasons down in the Outer Banks. I haven't been there the whole time, but, you know, 17 seasons for one reality TV show. That's a pretty good ride. Oh, that's incredible. Damn good. Damn good. Incredible ride, man. Uh, yo, listen, man, thank you so much, first of all, for taking your time. I know you have a, a, a crazy schedule. You're either skiing no on some crazy mountain, uh, fishing, flying planes, doing everything. Dave, I, I also like love following you on social media. One of them guys that gets back to you. It's no no BS. You know, like you didn't turn into no uh, TV star or nothing like that, Dave, on us, you know? Nope. I'm just, just uh, as Marciano says, Dave the Fisherman. I'll, Dave. I'll, I'll say what he says. We're just normal people. The last show, I'll be honest with you, we had Manny from Fat Tuna and John on the show. And it was kind of funny because uh, I was kind of making like a little funny, a funny you a little mm. tiny bit because I'm watching <laughs> you now in season 10 drinking your coffee as, uh, you know, Gordo and uh, and uh, what Sandro, Sandro uh, killing it. And them guys are... Uh, you know who they are. I mean, I got to tell you firsthand, you know what your team is. How important is it to have a good team while fishing for them giant tuna fish? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not just I. It's, it's, it's all of us. You know, you're, you're only as, as good as your team. Yeah, you can go out and fish by yourself. You know, it, it gets tiring. You know, you don't catch as many fish. But just, you know, having good guys there, you know, just not working for you but working with you, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, just working in harmony, going out and – just going through the motions and always, you know, being on the same page most of the time. You know, that's what it's all about to be successful or part part of it. And it's funny watching this season because we got a lot of new personalities on the show now this year with Spurge coming on, who, from you know my understanding, is a is a a vocal legend. Um, mm -hmm. And this guy, I mean, watching him and me and Buck talked about it on a couple of shows. Like, you almost learn things just watching him on television. You know, the guy is so calm. 
and he takes it nice and easy, and he's teaching the kid, and it's just, it, it's fun to watch, and, you know, that kind of goes back to what we were saying. Mm-hmm. You know, 17 seasons, 10 seasons for you guys, seven for the guys down south. Every season, something new and interesting starts Why did it take so long to get Spurge on the show? That's, I, that's one thing too. I wanted to yeah. know. That guy should have been on the show day one. I mean, I don't know if he, day one, but... Uh, what took so long to get him on the show? Yeah, I mean, each, each year, you know, they rotate, you know, one or two boats, you know, in and out. You know, it's just, uh, you know, there there have been other good fishermen on the show. It's, uh, you know, there's no rhyme or reason, you know, why they get who they get and why some boats come and then they go. You know, why they don't invite him back, I don't know. But, you know, Spurge is definitely one hell of a fisherman. You know, he's he's approaching 80. Oh, like he's wow, 79. Really? Wow. For him to... And for him to go out there and, and do what he does, you know, he's hardcore. You know, there's a lot of days that I don't want to be out there, and he's already out there. So, you know, something to be said for that. Yeah, I hear you, man. I heard people say that you'd rather be on the, the mountain skiing sometimes, right? How was that, man? Yeah. Like, I've seen you on, I've seen you on social winter. media, man. Uh, what, what mountains are you skiing on? Because the people don't know you as a fisherman, as the captain of the, you know, tutuna.com. And, uh, but do they know you personally as the, the skier? the the pilot no i think a lot of a lot of people know that you know i, I fly i've been a commercial airline pilot for 28 years but no i, I don't think many people are uh, just you know people close to me obviously but yeah I, I ski all winter i ski race competitively i race in the uh, ussa in the master's division uh i race in other leagues i'm i'm on the road probably five days a week and i do giant slalom uh super g and downhill and i travel travel all over the place all throughout new england and uh and out west and I, i'll and tell you I'm, i went to I'm hunt the mountain i went to hunt the mountain and i could barely i could barely get down the 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 the, the, the blue or whatever one the second level i could barely get down it man so mm-hmm. you've been doing that for a while i now, actually get sick looking up the double diamond Oh, I can't do it. I can't go to the top of that mountain and go down. Oh, I definitely can't do that. That's one hundred percent. How'd you get into skiing, man? What, what, what? Like especially like, no, like especially that way, man. It's kind of it's kind of like uh, competition skiing like that. Do you finish um, high on the stand like you do on the show? Do you finish like that in skiing? Uh, you know, no. It's it's pretty competitive. I mean, we have we're racing. You know, I'm I'm going to be fifty six on Friday. Happy birthday! And we have I'm I'm competing against kids that are eighteen years old. It's eighteen and older. And uh, there was a lot of uh, retired U.S. ski team uh, people on there. Uh, you know, it's just a, a, a very good group of athletes, and it's it's very competitive. Even my last couple of races, it's uh, I'm you know like in two runs, I'm point three seconds out and point five seconds out. You know, that's that's pretty much the blink of an eye. And regardless, each 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 race I go to, I know who's there. And I'll still be 0.3 behind this guy and 0.5 behind the other. Regardless of how much I train all week, I can't beat certain people. And you take 0.3 seconds. That is literally the blink of an eye. And I can't make that up in a course that's a half mile to a mile long. It's crazy. Uh, we, we, know you're, we know you're a competitive fisher because we've seen that in 10 seasons. Plus, are you competitive on skiing too? Like that, that, oh, that competitive uh, uh, nature? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ten, a, a lot more so on the skis than I am in the, uh, on the boat. A lot more. You control more, right? On the skis, right? You feel like you can control more than obviously on the boat, right? Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, ski racing is really, really tough. I said, I've been at it for years and I've been racing against the same people for a long time. And again, regardless of how long I train, how hard I train, there are certain people that I will never beat. And like I said, it's, I'm just trying to make up three tenths of a second, three tenths, and I can't do it. I got social media. You guys, you guys on social media are like almost like, you know, the TV stars social media wise, right? Um, mm-hmm. People want to know your relationships. They want to know TJ and and everybody else's relationship. Uh, I got to get this off because somebody keeps on posting it. Are, are you engaged? I am not engaged. Okay, that is ab- absolutely false. I am not engaged. Not for a bad reason. There's no bad reason behind you're not engaged. Nothing like that, right? Yeah, that's social media. No, I've been, <laughs> I've been with the uh, I've been with the same person now for uh, coming up on seven years. But yeah, it's 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 gonna happen. It's, okay, it's uh, gonna happen. Chris East Eastburn. Okay, you got it, man. Stop with that question. Don't worry. Oh, uh, we got I, Chris I, here. I think he wants to be invited to some kind of wedding or something like that. That's what it seems like to me. <laughs> Chris Eastburn, there will be no wedding in the immediate future. Maybe after your uh, he's coming fishing with us. Okay, he's a but friend. He's a no friend. Okay, okay. Future. I got you. He's a friend. I, you never know. You, you never know on social media. Uh, one of your top friends always says hello. Uh, Jeanette Nielsen. She, she's, 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 she's on. Hello, she, Jeanette. 
All right, a lot of people are on here. Let's run through the list real quick. Let's give them a little love. Oh, she always posts this up. Uh, let's get through it real quick. Okay. There you go. She's telling there you hello. Hello, Jeanette. Jeanette's a cool gal. She's, she came fishing with us, I don't know, probably seven years ago. She was just on the dock, and we were going out. And I said, hey, you want to come fishing? She hopped on the boat, and she caught one. It was probably, I think it was like 600, maybe 700 pounds. Wow, a lot bigger than uh, wow. this season, man. This a season, lot of small fish this season. Yeah, why? Why? Why is that, Dave? Why? What is that? Is that just um, the nature of the game? That's what's around. Yeah, that's the way. You know, that's that's fishing. You know, it's just like you going striped bass fishing. Some days you catch all big ones. Some days it's a mix. Some days it's all small ones. You know, this year there was quite a few small ones around, and you know there there will be some bigger fish too. But you know, every year's every year's different. Some years we got to work twice as hard. You know, it's it's. Uh, it's this fishing. year, this year it's with the way the prices ocean. are, it's like you're working 10 times as hard with the way the prices are. So, you know, I, I yep. give you guys a lot of credit for grinding through this year because it, it can't be easy. I, I mean, the amount of gas and now gas is going up and it's just crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, the things, the, the, um, the obstacles that are jumping in front of you guys this season is just insane. I think it was everybody, Dave, everybody, Brian. I mean, it's like. I mean, everybody, how many people got fired from their jobs? And, and you said you haven't flown a plane in, in 15 months. I mean. Yeah, 15 months. That's that's insane. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like it's starting to come back a little bit. But then again, again, my do my wife works in a public school. And mm -hmm. each week a class is, you know, taken out for 10 days or, or uh, quarantined for this and that. And mm -hmm. it's like, ah. are, are you vaccinated? Are, did you fact? You know, you know, yeah, I, I, it was a very personal decision for me, as it was for everybody else, whether they were going to get vaccinated or not. You know, I, I mean, I went back and forth, and I, I did go last week, and I did get uh, for a two shot Pfizer. I did get my first shot. I had no reactions, but you know, it's, uh, it was, it was a tough decision to make. You know, it's, uh, you're in a, do you want COVID or do you want a possible side effect of the vaccine, whether it's immediate or down the road? You know, I mean, you're in a three-story building that's on fire. Do you jump or do you run through the flames? You know, that's where you're at. And that's where, I mean, most of us are at in the decision. Some people, it's a no-brainer. But, you know, for me, it was it was a very difficult one to make. And it seems like the Pfizer, the Pfizer uh, route is the right one right now. You know, it seems like there's a lot less uh, stories in the news about it. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. I did it. Uh, I, I had, I had no the second one. Now. I heard the second one is uh, more of a have a day off kind of. I heard a lot of people mm -hmm. get a, feel a little weak. I mean, I, I, I don't, ha I didn't, I didn't get the vaccine, but I heard a lot of people tell me that the second one is the one that shakes them up and stuff like that. Um, season ten has been different, and I, I, it's, I guess, in a way, it's kind of the way it had to go down because with the coronavirus and everything else like that, you guys got back on the water. At least that's a, that's one good thing. Uh, we got to see you guys season 10 obviously start and i think, think they were on episode nine i believe is sunday night nine nine east nine central right mm -hmm. is nine central eight central eight is, cent it, is it episode nine already i it think was, so uh, this, yeah this wow. week is nine it's nine yeah right. this week is nine last one was eight okay and one other thing i want to ask you guys man this is this is crazy when you guys put that ruler down, how come we can't get a, a full shot on <laughs> how big that fish is? Because we don't know if the, if the rule is actually. No. I'm just. I, that's, I know. Come that's on, an I know, accurate measurement. If you're I know ask it is. Definitely, you should ask why some boats don't stretch out the tape. When you see the tape on her, it's all wrinkly. So if it's 85 inches, it's probably 83. Sandro, Sandro, do me a favor, Sandro. You jump on it. Sandro's jumping on it on the center of the bit to make it. No, <laughs> not at all. No, no, no. Um, that's one thing you have and, and your favorite is your crew, right? I mean, good crew, I, good crew excellent crew. Um, well, you got to remember too, they, 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 those guys, both Sandra and Jordy came from never, from never fishing. They, they never tuna fished, you know, they've been with me 13 years. So the first, you know, the first year they were on the boat, second year, third year, you know, there's, there's a learning curve. It wasn't, if that was on the show, you know, there, there'd be a lot of, you know, mistakes made both for me and them, you know, it's, it, it takes time to get a, a crew, you know, trained, you know, like Tyler every year, you know, had, had a different crew and it was difficult for him. You know, there's a lot of yelling and fighting. Now he's got a sister, not one year, two years, he's three years, got four a, years yo, now. Dave, I'm going to cut you off right now. And I'm going to cut you off. He's got to stop saying 
my sister and then I'm with my sister. Your sister can fish. It's you and your sister versus everybody else. Stop yeah. saying I'm beating you with my sister. I stop that, Tyler. Please. It doesn't his sister. She's 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 a human being. <laughs> with, <laughs> no, I'm only no different than anybody else. I'm only busting chops. It seems like she, confidence she, she, confidence is really the uh, the go to you know need there. You know, I mean, if you if you're taking somebody out there for the first time, if they're confident, they're gonna learn it. You know, it's not for everyone though. You know, no, I mean, it's that, not. That 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 is a tough, tough thing. I worked on the water with the tugboats, yes. and it's either you can do it or you can't. Mm-hmm. You know, you can either handle the water or you can't handle it. How and did you people... How did you wind up finding uh, Sandro? How did How did you guys work out? You know, him coming down to work for you. That's a good one. Uh, just in, in a, just a, a, a quick summary of it. One of my best friends kept uh, asking me, "Hey, I got my neighbor Sandro." He wants to go fishing with you. And, uh, you know, I didn't have any room for him at the time. And, uh, you know, like three, four months went by. And then one day I was getting ready to go down to the Cape and I didn't have anyone to go with me. And I asked him to, hey, call up Sandra, see if he wants to come. And he hopped on the boat with me, never went tuna fishing. And that day we caught a 1200 pounder. And from that day on, you know, he's been with me and that was 13 years ago. So he's come, he's come a long way in a short time. And Jordy too. You know, Jordy's been on the boat equally as long. Both both of them got their captain's licenses about four years after fishing with me. And I started letting Sandro and Jordy run the boat at about, you know, season five or so. I, I felt confident with them, you know, being safe, felt confident with them going out and, you know, catching fish, not just tuna, but we do charters every day. You know, we do our cod and haddock and they do a great job. You know, it's, it's funny when you see the numbers of, uh, you know, how they say, like, the crab fishermen have the most dangerous job in the world. You know, that that's like they say that's number one. But <clears throat> last week I watched the whole thing on the kids from uh, Deadliest Catch. I don't and watch that they show. went out and they, well, they went out doing what these guys do. And it was, it was, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you see that, right? Bloodline or something mm-hmm. like that. Deadliest yeah, Bloodline. Yep. And they went out and they went down to Hawaii. They started fishing and going for tuna marlin like all sorts of exotic other okay, fish okay and they had a hard time doing it they couldn't do it they had to get local help they had to get people from like the hawaiian mm-hmm. islands to help them out on the water so it, it shows you the vast difference of of you know the extremes you know like these yep. guys yeah they do have a hard job doesn't mean they could do what you do mm-hmm. and the opposite applies it. right you know, the opposite applies you right. know we can go on the crab boat and we would be you know lost it would be a learning curve for us also I love you. I love your crew. I love your cast members, man. Uh, shout out to uh, Marciano. He's listening now, watching. Uh, I, I love that he guy. Said, is it, he said, is it true? Just, he said the, uh, the, the, the Pfizer one makes you willy shrink. <laughs> Who said yeah, that? Some of us Marciano. can't afford Marciano. Some of us can't afford that. <laughs> get that shrinkage. No, I don't. I'm Irish already, man. I don't need no. I'm going to have to try the Johnson & Johnson one. Maybe the Johnson & Johnson's good for the Johnson. And my be. boy. And my boy is in the house. Bobby. Mr. Bobby Earl, bed bug in, in the house. There he goes. That's oh, my boy. man right there, man. He, he's he, hilarious. He's a, he, he asked me to ask you a question. I'll post it for you. Oh, right boy, quick. I want to hear this one. Yeah. I don't understand what, what, what he means by this, so you can tell me. What is it? Here we go. One second. Give me a second. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. There it is. Don't tell Dave about the Oreos. <laughs> now, what, what is that? Come on. You got to tell me. Hey, look, when, when we were down in the Outer Banks, uh, my boat fishing down there, I was, I was actually in a condo with, uh, with Bobby and his crew. That's, I lived with them. Oh, I heard and, the story. And, no, 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 I'm going to cut you up. I heard the story. They were sick, and you bounced. You left, yes, like, like that's right another away. Story. That's another story. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oreo story. I got a good Before memory. I got, got a good sick. memory. Before they got sick, <laughs> I'm an Oreo. I love Oreos. I'm a fanatic. So when I saw, when I went to the condo and Bobby had Oreos on the counter, we went through, and Bobby is a big Oreo fanatic. We would probably go through, you know, the, the blue boxes of Oreos, not single stuff or double stuff, but it has to be most stuff. You know, the cream is probably like a quarter inch thick. Oh. We eat like a bag or a box of them in one night, Bobby and I. You got to have milk with that, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Are you, you're not going to tell me you're going to be drinking 1% milk, right? You're not that kind of guy, right? Uh, you want to know what I drink? It's yeah, even please. worse than that. What's that? Almond milk. Oh, almond milk. Oh. I asked my son, man, how did, how did they get the milk out of the almond? I didn't, never understand that one. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh, most. He said the most stuff. Not even like the most. Yeah. Most. So how most many? How, I get the ones like the thin, 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 thin ones because oh, I feel like I have that. Bobby's listening right now. He might even he might even click off if you tell him that. It's not oh. even most stuff. There's no 
No comparison. I had no clue, man. I had definitely the no chocolate clue. Chocolate marshmallow ones are the best, man. I We're talking about marshmallows. Oh my God. Chocolate marshmallow Oreos. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'll tell you, 1,200 pound fish you caught, man. You went out there. How'd you handle that one the first? How do you? How do you do how come we don't see the twelve hundred pound fish more anymore? You know that you know that that's rare. I mean, to date, I have I think somewhere about ten, maybe eleven fish over a thousand pounds, and that's that's in forty years. You know, and I I, I highly doubt I'll top that twelve hundred pounder. You know, they are around. Tyler caught one over twelve hundred pounds like uh, seven years ago. He was right. He was right next to us. I watched it. Uh, you know, there's there's a few caught each year, but you got to remember there's there's a lot of boats fishing. Most of the fish. Average between 250 and 500 dress up here. You know, it's, 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 and to get one over a thousand pounds is amazing. And to get one over 1200 pounds is even more amazing. I watched something on Netflix, and I don't know if you've seen it or you can you can even comp them, you know, talk about it. Uh, I know what it, you're going to say, but go ahead. Is that true that uh, fishing de- de- depletes uh, the species like they are? Like, I see. I forget what it's called, like seology or something like yeah, that. Yeah, somebody me, just told me I, I have not seen that. I you have, have not, not seen, seen it. it. Okay, because that made me mad at, like, you know what it is? I see, I'm not a fisherman. I can't pretend. I, I only interview fishermen on, you know, Facebook Live. I mean, I, I've never, trust me, I, I can't really talk about it at that length, you know. But seeing that thing, I was, like, disturbed, man. The way, not that it's fished in America, you guys stick to the limit, stick to – you guys are fishing. Yep. You put back, you tag, you do all the right things. Mm-hmm. But how, how can we control outside of the United States? And, yeah. and they're, they're like savages. You can't. I mean it's just, it's just, the, way the, it's just the way the world works. You know, just uh, – I mean no we filter. fish in a response. What's that? They have no filter. They'll do anything, no. you know. A lot of nations turn a blind eye. You know, if anything, you know, we're leaders in, you know, fishing – you know, the way, you know, it should be done. You know, do we go out and harvest fish? Yes. Do we deplete the stock? Yes. But we do it in a responsible way, in a way that the scientists say, hey, what you guys are harvesting is is a fair, as a number they determine is good enough where the, uh, where the species can still be sustainable. But a lot of nations uh, all over the world, you know, I don't know how many, but there's there's quite a few, you know, turn a blind eye. You know, there is no quota. And if there is a quota, you know, when it's full, they keep fishing. But we don't do that here. What are you? What are you drinking, Brian? Uh, somebody wants to know on a thing. Hey, Brian, what what are you drinking? You're uh, drinking. Uh, uh, monster. He drinks Monster, man. You still, you got any of the pork chops there? <sighs> any of the pork chops? Yo, you should bring them downstairs. <laughs> yeah, they're getting torn up upstairs, man. All right, so let me give a shout out real quick, right? Uh, Kermans, they're on one sixteenth. If you, I know this is no one really lives in Rockaway, that's probably listening to the show. But if you're ever in Queens, Rockaway Beach, on one sixteenth Street, the butcher's the man. He's the best butcher in the world, sponsors the show, and I appreciate it. So anybody in Rockaway, stop by. He's got the barbecue stuff out, the the, the, the hamburgers, the, the swirl, oh, the get, pinwheels. He's got oh, everything. Oh, hungry. Everything. So Dude, if you ever in Rockaway. Such a, he's such a good butcher, man. I, when we come up there, we're going to bring up some stuff for you guys to try out that you probably haven't tried, like Can- like the Kansas City Steaks. They have, like, their own Kansas City Steaks that I've never seen anything like them. To this day, anywhere I've gone, I was just in Oklahoma where they had everything, and I didn't, I, I didn't see anything even remotely close to it. So we'll bring some of those up to you guys, and uh, you can, we'll, we'll barbecue them up. Hey, bring, bring lots of them. Oh, Queens we'll bring is all the, the yo, yeah, Bob, we'll Bobby, Bobby. Queens is always in the house, Bob. Rockaway That's Beach, right. as the Ramones song. That's what I tell everybody. If you, you're like, where you from? Where you from? I said Rockaway Beach, and they're like, oh, where's that? And I'm like, you ever hear the Ramones song? Rock, rock, Rockaway oh. Beach. But getting that's up another, there, that's another. That's eighties. But getting up there, dude. We were talking that's about airplane work. before, right? How many people out there have seen airplane? Like, uh, yeah. you know, not that yeah, many. You, you gotta be fifty. You gotta be fifty and older to know that movie. Airplane, Animal House. Yeah, right. You know, All the great. Animal House was a great movie. Yeah, so many good mm-hmm. ones. Dazed and Confused. Right, there's another one. Okay, know. we got um, uh, Bob Cook saying something about the spirit. Oh, yeah, the name of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it I gotta does. watch. Somebody just mentioned it to me today. I gotta, I gotta tune into that. And check it out. I Somebody actually Bob reached Setti. out to the girl that, that, I'm the guy that actually filmed the thing. I tried to reach out to him uh, to come on the podcast, and I would I'd love to have him and somebody representing a fisherman like you guys on at the same time, maybe down the line. You know, that would Dude, be something ooh, interesting. A Zoom debate. That would be definitely interesting. Uh, this season is – I'm so happy for uh, Marciano and uh, the new boat. Great. looking beautiful. Um, 
everything about it. I mean, even seeing uh, Paul's new boat. But I've seen Paul's new boat following him on social media, so that wasn't new to me. But um, we do have a personal connection with him this year, though. We are rooting for Paul to win. Yes, yes. We'll just He's season. doing great. Just this season. You know, we right don't now. know. People think that like, I have Love a special Paul. intel on the show. No. I don't know nothing that happens, any episodes like that. Happy that, what's cool, time flies. Jack and them guys got on the yeah. board. They starting to prove themselves nice. I don't know how they fish. Dave, how do, how do they fish on the front of that boat like that, man? That's that's hard, that's, right? You know, yeah, when I was a kid growing up, you know, I, I fished in the center console. It's, it's actually, it's easier to fight a fish from up in the front of the boat like theirs, the fish just pulls the boat around than it is to fight it, you know, in the back of the boat. However, you know, for, for two guys to be on a small boat like that, in addition, you know, all the gear and a cameraman on a rough day, rough night, you know, around the clock, it's, it's pretty hardcore. It's, the, it's tiresome. You know, we go inside. The cameraman don't help you guys, right? No, no. I mean, there's no, yeah. there's no circumstance. I mean, if it's a life, you know, danger, like if life is in danger, yes, they're going to help you. Yeah, they'll but, help after they get um, some footage, of course. <laughs> they'll, they'll help. Good job, guys. No, but I, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it, it's something that I always thought about. Like, you know, even when Tyler was out there by himself, hey. walking out, you know, who's like that? I, who's that? Hold on. It's Calvi. See him in the window right there. Oh, oh he's yeah. got big quick, man. Yeah. The bang, yeah. deer out and door. everybody wants to know. I'm um, saying, wait, where's, where's the pickles at, man? Pickles, I gotta go pick them up. Pickles still doing well, God 15 bless years old, him, still getting man. around. I gotta go pick him up. He's at somebody's house. He uh, he takes his little walkabouts and uh, he goes and gets some food. And then it's time for me to go. I can't let him walk back at night because of the coyote, so I'm gonna have to go get him. And that's that's what I'm doing right after this. Crazy, right? Okay, there's one thing I can't stand, right? Watching Wicked Tuna and you guys ain't arguing and fighting and jumping on backs. I need a little action, man. This this unity, this uh, this love of uh, boats, this, it's, it's too different to me, Did man. You Did you see the look? Something's coming. The I look. know. I uh, saw. No. Uh, no, I, it's good. It's it's all it's it's all good. You know. Hey, yeah. when I'm out fishing, come on, Dave, I, Dave, Dave, stop, 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 everybody. Well, Dave, well, what? you're not it's looking good. in your book. You ain't giving your numbers out still, right? <laughs> you got your book. You're not touching the numbers in the book. Not that nice. So there's a yeah, little we're all, bit. We're all working together. It's, it's nice. You know, the, the drama gets old. You know, oh, a lot it's of the good. bands did, didn't like it. You know, I don't like it. I'm too old for that. But, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, when you, when you fish for giant bluefin tuna, that's, that's, sometimes that's the way it goes. Uh, it, I had a little flashback last week's episode when uh, Tyler's fish started heading towards your boat. And he's like, oh, I, I got to ask him to move. Oh, my gosh. And he, he was like hesitant to ask you. And back in the days, he would jump on there, move your boat, move your boat. Maybe you drove yeah. by him. And I still, you know what? Even back in the day, if it was the next day after, you know, one of her mishaps, I, I would have still moved. You know, that's just, you know, no, I don't, don't want to see him lose the fish, you know. And, yeah, we're, we're talking now. We get along. We're working together, helping one another. It, it's all good right now. That is good in a way, man. Come on. You know we love we love drama, man. Everybody loves the drama. When everybody gets along, it's just too it's it's too easy, man. I, I, met, I met Tyler after the whole incident that you had with him early on. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I had such a chip on my shoulder about him for a while. I didn't know how I felt about him. You know, he just, he seemed like. He grew up. You no, know, he did. He did. But I, I also, when I, I, I also realized when I met him that that whole facade of them, like saying, you know, acting like he's the troublemaker and stuff. He, pro I mean, listen, he probably it's, has. Some, it's it's he, reality TV, Brian. No, no, At the I end of the day, you got to make it like a little well, bit. Well, they, they make somebody the enemy out of it. And in, in, in essence, that's what brings the drama. Yes. But I mean, I, it, you know, when I met him, I was like, you know what? This guy's actually not that bad of a dude. Like, he's all right. Like, he was at, he was visiting TJ, and I just happened to run into him. Good dude, man. Like, I, I never had a, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I didn't have a bad word with him. Like, I, I thought, I, I honestly thought with the way I am and the confrontational way that I can be sometimes, that I was like, if I ever see that guy in the street, I'm just going to spit in his face. No. Just because, no, because. Don't even say that, because then people think that you actually would do that. No. no. Well, I would have. No, if, but you wouldn't. Years ago, I absolutely would have. Because I, I, didn't like the way that, I didn't like the way they portrayed him on TV. It seemed like he was a troublemaker. And, like, he, you know, he would start fights with Dave and start fights with whoever, and they would all get into it. I just never liked his end on it. So I always had mm -hmm. a bad thing with him until I met him. And the guy yep. is aces, man. I, I, I mean, I had a great conversation with him for about 20 minutes in the store. And he took the time to talk to me, man. It was cool. So I, 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 you know, don't believe everything you see on TV, pretty much. You know, <laughs> don't believe it, man. I love it. I love the controversy. It's, it's, it's crazy. Makes, it makes it more fun. It, makes it better. Yeah. It does. It definitely does. Yeah. Uh, teaming up now. Let's go back to like way back. 
Do you remember when they first told you that you were going to be on some TV show called Wicked Tuna? What did what, what, you think back then? What was it? What was your first thought? I mean, that's 10 years ago, whatever, plus. Oh, oh we lost it. We lost him. We lost him. I can't hear him talk. can't hear you. He's probably going to pull, pull the plug. Pull it out. Your headphones are killing me, man. What am I going to do? It's like, find the mics. All right, so we'll just talk while he figures it out real quick. I like, okay, preview. What is this? Finish. Oh, oh he called back in. Okay, hold on one second, guys. Let's see what we got here. All right, let's see what we got. Give me, just be patient with me one second, guys, as we try to fix this. Let's see what we got. Oh, it didn't pop up. So let me get him off. He'll call, he'll call right back in one second, guys. Um, out there, let's get a, some predictions going on. Uh, who do you like to win season 10, man? Who you, I mean, honestly, I'm definitely pulling for Paul Wickapissa. Uh, absolutely. Who do you who, out there? Anybody else out there? What's your pick, Sam? Who do you who do you think is going to win season 10? Okay. So we put a poll up on the uh, on the website. There on you the go. Facebook page. Oh, one thing before hey, let me get him back on one second. Okay. Let's put him to the left of us. Let's see if this works. Dave, you're back. Yeah, we hear you. You're back. I don't know. Sometimes it just sometimes it just wigs out like that, man. You know. Here we go. How's that? Not bad. Not bad. Nah, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Here you go. You're getting feedback. They're saying. All right. Yeah. There you go. Hold on one second. I don't hear feedback. If you guys hear feedback out there, it I hear you fine, but I don't know if um, people out there. If you guys can hear, please give me a thumbs up if you can hear Dave, because I'm not sure. You got me. I'm here. I'm here. I got you. I hear you. So that's all that matters. As long as I can hear you, you can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. He he's gone now. He's right here. Where do you go? He's not gone. All right. Let's see what people say. Always rooting for tuna.com. Let's throw this up here real quick, okay? Let's see this. Oh, you get here. Okay, thank you so much. I give a special love to our girl Chrissy, man. She's the best. She is the best. Every week she posts. Um, you guys can also follow as we you know continue the Wicked Tuna shows. We'll have Tyler, Dave, when he makes some time, Marciano. I want to get his I want to get his son on too, and Jay, if they want to come on. Uh all the guys, all the guys come on the show, but um, it's fun, man. What kind of ride? What, did you picture this ride back then, like 10 years ago? Did you picture anything like this 10 years ago? No. How you hear me now? Is, you hear I me hear okay? you. I hear you. Okay, good. Yep. Yep. I can hear you loud and clear. clear. Yeah, I mean, no, like 10 years ago, I, I mean, myself and Marciano, we, you know, when we started, you know, we, we never, ever thought that the show would even get it, you know, get to the second year. Most reality TV shows don't even make it, you know, partway through their first season. And, you know, after we got through season one, you know, the ratings were great. And then we got renewed. You know, we were excited about that. Season two, we got renewed again, and we, we couldn't believe it. And the ratings just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. And then season three, it was Nat Geo's highest rated show in the history of the channel. It might've even been season two, I can't remember, but you know, just going from, from, you know, getting called to be on a reality TV show and, you know, being where we are now, you know, 10 years later, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. You know, again, just, uh, I mean, how many reality TV shows do you know that can say that they were on for, you know, 10 plus years? And, and I, I still, I just talked to one of the producers and he thinks that we're, we're going to be on to season 15, most likely. Oh, that's so, awesome, man. So, and, and the ratings this year are even up above where they were last year. So that's, that's pretty good. Oh, that's awesome, man. And I guess the, the, the Disney Plus having their own um, service helps you guys out a lot, too, because now you can just go to Disney Plus and watch the past seasons. Which mm -hmm. I think is awesome, man. Awesome. I got something called Hulu, man. I love the. I got the Hulu TV now, and I don't miss nothing. That? It's internet. T it's internet TV. It's like cable on the internet. Like that's it. It's like fifty dollars a month. I cut out all the other stuff, and um, I get I get National Geographic, so I'm good. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to pay. Every everything's an extra. You know, you got extra oh, HBO extra, and stuff like that. But I get 
I wouldn't get it. Like I looked it up and I looked at Hulu and I went National Geographic. And I looked, I looked, I looked, okay, there it goes. I can get it. History Channel and National Ge- Geographic. I got them. I got to have them because I'm a history guy. I love Remember history. Remember when we were kids? Remember we had the little box, the little lever, click, 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 36 channels. That's all you had. Now, Dude, now I was lucky to have that. Hundreds. I was lucky to have uh-huh. that. We had something called WHT that had a box. And you got that. That was the only movie channel we used to get. And you used to click it with like a big, it was a box with a switch. Yeah. It's the same uh, thing. It had all the uh, Okay, costs. okay, okay. So yeah, all yeah. the way across. And then you wanted to go to the next round. You move the lever down, go all the way across. Do you remember using the device scripts on, on the TV to change the channel as a kid? Oh, it's hor- horrible. That, we, <laughs> again, when, <laughs> when, you, when we have discussions like that, you know you're old. And Friday, I'm going to be another year older. Oh, but you're looking good, man. You're looking good, Dave, man. My son, I, I always have. We grew up as kids. We didn't have the remote control. They came out with the one with the wire, and then all of a sudden, now these days, I tell my son, I got, I, I touch my son, Jake. And I go, oh, change the channel, and he's got to get up. Like, and the batteries run out or something like that. Can't change it. I'm like, okay, ch- channel, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know. Oh, I love it. Use rabbit ears. Did you use ever you Dave rabbit ears? I, I didn't use what rabbit, is it, ears. rabbit ears. Let me post it up here real quick. Chris said something here real quick. What the hell are you talking about? I don't rabbit ears. Oh bunny ears. Chrissy. I'm sorry. Bunny ears. I'm sorry. Same Chrissy. thing. Rabbit Chrissy. bunny. They were just on the boat a couple days ago. I saw the pictures. Come I saw. Down, I, say hello. They got to meet Calvin wherever he is. Come here. Come here. Hey, yeah. No. No. I'm sorry because he wrote bunny ears and he wrote rabbit ears. Come up here. Hey. Let's see. Calvin. Let's see. Jump up, Calvin. What are you doing, Calvin? I got the treats here. Come here. Come say hi. Come here. What's Calvin doing, man? I remember on a good day, you were able to pick up in New York. Oh, there we go. Oh, my God. Is that a clone? Is that is that a Pickles clone? That's it. It's the same, it's the same dog as Pickles, but this is uh, he's 31 pounds. And this is as big as he's going to get. See, when I see Great. dogs like that now, this is kind of me growing up. As, I don't know. I see dogs like that, and I think they're girls. Cause they look all fluffy and stuff. Like, looks like a you know, a girl. Like, but they're not a guy, obviously. Do you want? Do you want confirmation he's a boy? No, not absolutely not. Yo, how do you? Now, the one thing about boys and girls, how do you? De- how do you determine which one with blue uh, bluefin tuna, the sex? You can. I mean, for I can only. Oh, you can't. I mean, just by looking at them, you can't tell. I think, if I remember correctly, the only way you can really tell the, the sex of a tuna is by the. Uh, I think it's by the liver. You got you to look, you, you look at the liver, and I think they actually have ovaries, too, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, I, I mean, I've had marine biologists on a boat, and when they, when they uh, you know, when we take the guts out, they look at it. I mean, we've caught fish with, uh, you know, with ovaries. You could see it, the sacs and all that. I'm pretty sure they're ovaries, but I think the only way you can really tell, in addition to the ovaries, is the, um, is the liver. Oh, I had no. Uh, I, clue. Again, I, that's not my area. I, don't I did try to problem. Google it. I did try to Google something. They said that um, the bluefin, if the females actually seem to be larger, which makes sense with animals. I mean, no, doesn't. I don't. don't I, 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 I can't comment on it. I, I mean, I, I, I just don't. I don't know the answer to that. I love the, I love Paul last episode. He was talking about a thousand pound. He goes, I think we got a thousand pound fish. And he does this, you know, Paul laugh. Every fish, every fish. Paul's my good friend. Every <laughs> fish he has on is a thousand pounds. But he goes, they got to be smart to get to a thousand pounds. And I was like, you know what? He's right. He's, he is right, man. Bluefin tuna are very, very smart. You know, you think, you, you, think, you think about it. When you were a kid, remember you had a goldfish bowl at your house? You got a little goldfish in there with a little pea brain. And every day you came home from school, what was that goldfish doing in front of the bowl? He was going like this, because he was associating you with the hand that feeds him. Learning has occurred. And that's just a very young goldfish again with a small brain. Now you look at a bluefin tuna, a big brain the size of a softball. It is and that big. 20, 30 years old. So learning, if learning can occur in a goldfish, I'm pretty sure learning can occur in a bluefin tuna you know, throughout that 20 or 30 years and with a bigger brain. So they do become smart. And, and uh, you know, not a marine biologist. I don't think a marine biologist even knows, but I am pretty sure that bluefin tuna can retain. And when a bluefin tuna has been around, he's been hooked before, he's gotten away, I think they're a little more difficult to get the bite because they know something is wrong. Makes sense. I mean, it totally makes sense. Because I think when it comes to land animals and, you know, water creatures or water animals – 
they, they get the they get a bad um I don't know what it is, but the water one we don't care about the ones in in, in the water, I mean, the fish or the, the dolphins or the whales. We don't care. Like, but God forbid something happening to the land animals, we'd be going crazy. Like, oh, they, yeah. like they have no feel. I, I don't know. I don't know. Their eyes are, re, are ridiculous. Oh, no, their eyes. I mean, their eye their eyes are like this. I mean, they're they're big. And I I've actually taken quite a few times and I've dissected the eye of a bluefin tuna where you you cut it out. And it's like, uh, you know, you cut the eye out, a lot of fluid comes out. And then there's, a, there's a, about uh, like a rubber ball, it looks like a, like a marble. It's, it's just liquid. Then you cut it and there's a smaller ball. And then you cut it again and there's even a smaller ball, the size of a pea. That's the small as you can go. So it goes from a big ball, cut it to a smaller ball, and then to something about the size of a pea, just that big right there. And if you take it and you put it on a fish box at night and you turn a flashlight on and shine it on it, remember a magnifying glass when you take it and go like this in the sun and it puts that point of light? When you shine a flashlight on that little ball, it puts a little point of light behind it. So it, it probably that big ball just captures all that light and it transfers it into whatever, into the brain and they interpret what it is. Uh, that's, I, I believe that's how they could see so well. It's just like their eyes are like a magnifying glass. It just takes everything and puts it in that little point. Because they're whatever almost happens in nature, however they interpret what they see. I'm not a, I'm not a doc, but I'm sure it's pretty similar to us. But their eyes were just, they're massive. Wow, I never would think that, wow. man. I, not the, the layer of uh, eyes, like, you know, I, I would never think, totally never, never. They're an almost impossible species to really study Pull out, I'm sure, right? We don't know what relationships they have, if they if they group together, if they travel. Like certain, like l at least the mammals, the dolphins, we can get an idea, or the whales. We yeah, know you, that you, know, you can't you can't really. It's it's hard to study a bluefin tuna. You know, it's not like you can get in a, a helicopter or an airplane in Africa and you can fly over and observe elephants and you can count how many are there. You can watch, you know, their habits, their feeding habits, mating habits, what they do at night, what they do in the morning. Can't do that with a bluefin tuna. Just you can't follow them. You know, just you know, there's so much we don't know about them. I want to feel one one day. Just feel on the pole, and just feel that. You know, I just want to feel. I because I, I see. You know, you see episodes, and you see, say Marciano's uh, daughter, Ange, Ange, what's her name? I'm sorry, Angelica. Oh, Angelica. I'm sorry. Actually, Angelica. I should know that fishery. Ah, dumb. Uh, but you see the <laughs> you see the the real. I mean, the reels near them, and even even Mer, Mer, like, same thing. They're huge, man. Mm -hmm. Huge. How much how much line is on a reel, you guys? You no, know, it, it all depends on what size, what diameter line you have on there. I use a very thin diameter uh, uh, braid line. Uh, you know, the, if you put the line on from the bottom of the spool all the way out, you probably get two miles of line on there, a mile and a half. Wow. It's, it could be a lot. You know, that's on my reel. Other people use Dacron, and and it's a uh, it's a quarter of that, you know, but it, 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 it's, it's a lot. And a fish can really, you get one fish taking a head of steam and not stopping. And it, 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 that spool, the diameter goes down relatively quickly. They're amazing creatures. Uh, and who taught, who taught you how to, who, who taught you how to like the fish and, and the tuna, the bluefin tuna fish? I mean, my dad taught me how to fish, you know, when I was, when I was a kid fishing up in the Adirondacks, bass fishing, pickerel fishing. Uh, you know, in New Jersey, we had a boat. We just, you know, we went uh, fluke fishing. You know, I lived right across the bay from you. Bass fishing, we did all that. But tuna fishing is something that I broke out on and did my own. And as a, as a kid growing up and putting a lot of time on the water tuna fishing, you know, I didn't learn from anyone. I taught myself. And there was, there was a long time where I was in the bleachers watching the show. I would watch a lot of boats getting bites and catching fish while I was a spectator, wondering what was going on. And there was a lot of other boats like me also that were just spectators watching. And all those other boats would say, hey, those guys were just lucky. And I'm like, no, they're not. They're doing something different that we're not doing, and I'm going to figure it out. And, you know, I didn't always fish the same way. I just, just trial and error, trial and error. And I made a lot of mistakes, and I learned from those mistakes. And each year, you know, I just grew, and I learned more and more. Again, just self-taught. And, uh, you know, I'm at a point right now where we're still learning. But, you know, it's, it's really plateaued. You know, we're, we're catching a lot of fish. And I don't think, like, in five or ten years, I'm going to be catching more fish. I think that I've really maxed out what I know. But, you know, we still try and perfect the baits. You know, we still try and keep everything clean. 
you know, we still try and make the best presentation that we can to the fish. Again, smart fish, big eyes, it's tough to get a bite. And, you know, we try and, you know, we have our bag of tricks and a good fisherman is versatile and knows what works where. And if something isn't working, you know, you got to, you got to change it up and figure out what it is. And, you know, and a lot of times we can figure it out, but there's more times than not that we can't figure it out. You know, if we had all the pieces of the puzzle and we completely understand these fish and how to get them to bite, we'd catch every one and, and we'd be millionaires. But that's fishing. You do the best you can with the knowledge you have. Now, people say you would be already. So, I mean, I, I listen to social media. So, you know, I watch social media. So, you know, <laughs> these people. Uh, one thing that really hit home with me is the loss of your dad and yep. last season. And that losing my mom, you know, a couple of years back and to lose a parent, that really... I, I can't say it turned me to you because I was a fan, a kind of fan already, but it really, you, it, it was tough to see you go through that, especially on film, man. That's, that must have been really tough, man. Did you ever catch a tuna with your dad? That's a good one. You ever uh, tuna no, fish? Actually, actually, no. My, da my dad, it was just, it was all just inshore fish, you know, just like you were doing yeah. the other day, you know, just yeah, yeah. bass, fluke, flounder. And all and, and that that was it, you know. No, I never I never caught a tuna with my dad. You know, lots of you know largemouth bass, pickerel, freshwater lakes, but no tuna. Out of the and whole, that, that's something I wish I could change. Yeah, I know. I saw. So, trust me, I know. My mom used to want to go to the stores, go to Coles, go, and I would like, Mom, I don't want to go. I'm tired. And I like back it. I like, why get it? What, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you just the stupid things like really like mm -hmm. that you look back at? If you had to pick anybody out of the wicked tuna cast you say you're closest to who do you say paul will paul be the closest you to yeah you know i mean you know i mean i i, and I don't want to say this that i'm not close to the other guys but you know if i had to pick one yeah it would definitely be paul you know paul's been with me you know for 23 24 years and he still fishes on my boat you know and in the fall a lot of times you know i don't want to go I, you know i love to hunt love to bike i love to run and, and i don't want to be on the boat every day you know sandra takes the boat jordy takes the boat and, uh, you know, when I'm not there doing the charters, you know, Jordy leaves in, in late fall to go out to California to, to do his uh, coaching, his ski coaching. You know, Paul, Paul works, you know, quite a few days in the fall on the boat. So, yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's been on the boat a long time, you know, and most of the time it's fun. And even last year in the Outer Banks when we went down there, we had a great time. You know, I told Paul, hey, when we go down there, look, let's go down, let's make a few bucks. Let's go catch some fish. But I want to go down. I want to have fun. I don't want to be butt heads or anything like that. And that's what it's all about. If I can't have fun doing it, I'm going to make some changes. You know, like even with Sandra and Jordy, you know, we, we get along so well. You know, we just there's really no arguing. If we do have, you know, a difference of opinion on something, you know, we get the job done and then we'll talk about it later. But, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, it would definitely be Paul. Oh, last season, uh, the OBX, <sighs> that was like no other I ever saw, man. Honestly, I think if I fished north like you, like you, I wouldn't go back down there, man. But I, I, one thing I know about you, you did not say we're gonna have fun. We're gonna win and have fun, right? Yeah, we're gonna go oh, down absolutely. there and win yeah, and I have fun. About it, but I, I knew it was gonna be tough down there. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's just I haven't been down there in twenty something years. You know, the inlet, I'm not familiar with it. There are gonna be days that I can't fish because I don't want to go through the inlet. There are going to be days that I'm going to come in early because I don't want to go through the inlet when it's going to get bad where the other boat stayed out. So, you know, we were at a, a disadvantage. And, you know, just, you know, with, with Paul and Sandra, what we caught, we did pretty damn well. We were pretty much par for the course, you know, most of the way. And, you know, and we lost quite a few fish too. But there are a lot of days where we didn't fish where the other boats did. You know, so I'm, I'm very happy with the way we did, you know, I, I couldn't ask for anything more, you know, again, I don't have the local knowledge and I don't have the confidence with the inlet and, uh, you know, safety is, is the most important thing for me. I'm not going to put my boat and my crew in, in, in jeopardy. A lot of bad stuff happens there to the guys with the local knowledge and a lot of bad things happen to more people without the local knowledge. And I don't want to be a statistic. Uh, uh, now, how, how do you, much do you give uh, credit to Tyler and pinwheel to go down there and win? Not being yeah, local. they went. You know, Tyler's been he's been going down there. You know, hey, I'll give credit where credit is due. They they do a good job. You know, Tyler Tyler fished a lot of days and and you know he caught almost every day. And if he didn't catch, you know, he lost the fish. You know, he, he they, you know they, he did a good job. Yeah, no, he did. He did a great job, man. Yeah, last season was a great season. I like that. Was. I didn't think you would ever you know consider going back down there, man. I'm watching episodes. Hey, we, we <laughs> 
You may I mean, see I, us back down there again. I don't think you ever see Marciano down there again. I don't think we that ever happened. Look, there's, there's a chance we may go back down this winter. Okay, okay. How about I got to get Marciano and ask him because he had some bad luck down there, man. You know, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it happens. You know, not not every year is going to be successful for every boat. You know, we've we've had years too where you know we didn't catch as many as we would have liked. But you know, that's that's fishing. You know, it's not it's not what you do one year. It's what you do all the years combined. You know, it's about staying in the black. You know, for your career as a fisher. You know, if you're going, if you're going out and you're not catching any anything or catching a little year after year after year you're doing something wrong but if you go out and have one bad year or two bad years over a career there's nothing wrong with that you're not always going to be in the super bowl you're not always going to be in the playoffs but as long as you're playing the game you, you know you have that opportunity you have that possibility that you can come back next year and make the playoffs or even win yeah, you gotta you gotta, you gotta save yourself. We, we're gonna make the we're gonna make the the Super Bowl. We're gonna make that. You gotta actually think that because there's no sense well, of yeah, being. being that. that's, that's I know goal. how you think, man. I trust that's me. I I watched so many episodes with you guys, man. It's just it's at the point where you and and your crew. It's not even you guys don't even have to talk really. I mean, honestly, I'd be totally honest with you. Uh, Manny, uh, like last episode through um, from Fat Tuna. Threw uh, two darts and missed. I'm like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> and then Bob Cookie came in. He's like, ah, <laughs> like Mariano Rivera and just stuck. Boom. And stuck. That It's funny. This year I've seen a lot more um, the harpoon stick and then losing the hook. And you guys, a couple of guys caught with just the, the harpoon attached, man. Yeah. That's, it's, I guess that's it's all. dangerous. Now, if you look at, you know, you look at Jack. I saw and that. His, and, and his crew in there. You know, talking about the boats, those guys are standing up there with no, I mean, they're up on the, it's like being on the roof. They're just, they're up on the front there. There's no sides there. And they got those harpoon lines right at their feet, all tangled up. If they, if it wraps their ankle or wraps their hand, they're going right over the side. Whereas in my boat, if you get wrapped up, you could just drop to the deck, you know, and you got the, you got the covering boards there. You know, that's, we know that if we get wrapped, that's what we're to do. Drop on the deck. And rolling underneath the cover boards creates some friction. But those guys got to be careful. One little mishap, go over the side, and that could be the end of it. I, I lost a friend like that. Got pulled over the side. He was fishing solo. <sighs> I saw that last episode where Jack, the last. When he fell in. No, not the one he fell in. He, he darted. They darted one. And, it, it, oh, and, and he, he was skipping. He was yeah. jumping around. And I think the same thing. I'm like, whoa. Adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline. You see that hard through line? It looks like spaghetti. Easy to just have that mess. Wrap your hand and pull you over the side. Oh. It, 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 it happens. And you got you got to be careful. Now, if you had to do anything, out of anything, fishing, skiing, flying, hunting, which one would be number one, you think? I, it would have to be. Oh, God, that's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say fishing number one. Okay, we'll get fishing out of the way. No, Besides fishing, say, gonna, which other put, one? I'm gonna put fishing and skiing in the same category. That's it's a split. That's really? a split. I've been doing both since I've been pretty young. I, I just love doing both, and I, and I'm able to do both. You know, I do my fishing in the, in the uh, spring, summer, and fall, and then the winter I do my skiing. I, I mean, I love both of them equally. And any deers this year? Because I seen you in the, in the tree uh, quite a bit. Oh, did yeah. you get? Did you get? Did, did you get any that? deers? I did not. I, I only trophy hunt. It's got to be a big buck. I won't shoot any does. Big bucks, I won't shoot baby. any small bucks. It's got to be a bucks. wall hanger. Yeah, if I walked in the in, 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 in there, you would shoot me because I'm a big buck here. Boom, take I, me right out, man. Now, here's a question. Off the, off the, <laughs> off the beaten path. You ever see Sas Sasquatch out there? Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, saying, because I watch like no, uh, you no, know, but Travel I, Channel I, and all this crazy stuff, man. I haven't, but... A lot of how about like, mermaids? How about mermaids? Right mermaids? Back here. What's that? Any mermaids? No mermaids. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> they got me, man. I tell you, that channel got me a couple years back. Remember they had that mermaid thing, and it was all a hoax. And I'm like, yo, they got mermaids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? I don't know what channel. I think Probably it was about Daryl Hannah. I don't. You remember I don't... that? No, no. Uh, the movie Mermaid. Come on, Daryl Hannah. That goes. Yeah. Oh, I don't know the act. Okay, yeah, yeah. We shoot when you. Ah, her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I remember. Yeah, all, I remember. All, all the glass breaks. See, that's that's an old movie too. You know, Classic. you're old when you know that movie. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm getting old, dude, man. Oh my gosh. Anybody out there have any questions they want to ask? If you throw a cue up, uh, I got a guy over here saying hello. Let's see, what's up, Dave? Throw it up, Dave. What's Dave. up, Dean? They said, Dean, let's see, we got. I gotta man. say hello to Donna. If Donna's still there. Donna, Don I just accepted her friend re request. So hello, Donna. If you're still there, you're I the think man. It was Donna. 
You're the man. You're, you're good like that, man. Definitely good like that. I'll tell you, man. I'm definitely. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to say nothing about this year's season coming up because I don't know. Like I don't want. There's no can't. I I know it all, but you're not gonna get it out of it. <laughs> nothing. Episode nine. You gotta watch the next. Uh, what do we got? Eleven more to go. Listen, we have a psychic medium we could call and find all that stuff out. It'll be all right. <laughs> with the, uh, with, the, brazen, the, yeah, the yeah, thousand yeah. rods. The thousand rods. I said brazen rods. Like she's a, uh, like, like she's a, uh, what do you call soldering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you guys, get, you can get out the Ouija board. I, I know you yeah. still got one under your bed there. I was watching Jumanji Ouija. the other day. This is how crazy this. You don't need a Ouija board. Remember this the is... old movie Jumanji? What's his name? And Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah. Not only came out with new ones, and I'm like, it's a video game. It's like everything has to be video games. Yeah, I'm so all, like, it's all animated. It's not. Yeah. It's. it's it's not it was even a pretty cartoon. Good. It's in between cartoon and reality. It was good. Now. It was good. Yeah. Even like um uh, the basketball movie, Michael Jordan was in it. Space Jam. Now LeBron. Yeah, yeah. Nah, you I can't remake that, that, that stuff. Like you know, but Dave, you're not you're not a sports guy at all, right? Like you don't watch like baseball, football. You don't oh see yeah. Him. Oh, you we are. To, yeah, we go to baseball games. We go to uh, a lot of the Patriots games, uh, hockey games. We watch uh, we watch football Sunday almost you know all day long. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't take we're, we're that. I would, what team? Well, give me some teams, man. Like Patriots, obviously, hey, you know, right? I'm definitely a Patriots fan. I'm here in New England. I've been here now for 23 years, 24 years now. But I got. I got to honestly say that it was. It was really fun watching what happened in Tampa Bay. You know, with Tom Brady and Gronkowski to go down there to a new team the first year and do what they did and come back and win the Super Bowl and watch Gronkowski catch, you know, two touchdown passes for Brady. I'm sorry, even if you're not a Patriots fan or a Tom Brady fan, that's a good story right there. Good I thought, honestly, I'd be, uh, I'm a Jets fan. So when he went to Tampa Bay, I'm like, this guy's over. It's done. Like, it's done. I mean, a lot of people, and then to see that, mm -hmm. like, I, I would be shocked if Edelman comes out of retirement hey. and he goes to play for Tampa. That's, that is, that's, I, I think that's, I, I think that's more possible than not. I think that. It's a high pop probability that's going to happen. Wow. How about baseball? You're, 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 um... Red Sox. Red Sox. Yeah. Really? Oh, so you've been gone that long that you're a Red yeah, Sox no fan. No more Yankees. No more Get Yankees. out of Wasn't here. You, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You grew up as a Yankee fan and became a Red Sox fan? Yeah. Wow. Who, the, I've never heard of such Yankee a thing. Games. Wow. It's, uh, yeah, I'm a total Red Sox fan now. <laughs> and we'll go, we'll, we'll go to, I don't know, probably half a dozen games. And then in the summertime, you know, time permitting, we like to go more, but that's about all I have time for. Actually, we almost went last week to a game, but we thought it was home and it was away. Yeah, Red Sox games are fun, man. It's, it's I would love to go to a, a baseball there. game with you guys, man, like with some Wicked Tuna crew guys. See that. You ever throw on the first pitch down there? Are you a celebrity I down did, there? Yeah, actually, Paul, <laughs> I did, yeah. Through a strike? Like, uh, I was like, uh, I think seven, eight years ago, it was myself, Paul, and Sandra went. We went, uh, we went on the field, threw the first pitch, and then, uh, and then we went and hung out in the uh, in the dugout. And the uh, and uh, who was the who was the uh, the manager? Then? Francona, I think, right? Yes, right. yes, yes, Franco, yes. We were in the dugout, and then the cops said, "Hey, you guys got to go because the game was starting." <laughs> and Francona said, "They'll go when I tell them they can go." Awesome, <laughs> sweet. So that was pretty good. Oh, so that's we pretty. We hung out in there. We sat in there with uh, Pedroia. Pappy, it was. We were just hanging out, sitting there. It was. It was. It was. It was a great experience. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's like. That's like something I would love to do, man. Throw out a pitch like that, man. You threw a strike. Uh, you Google it. You'll find it. I'm gonna Google it. Google it. I'm looking for it now. Right, right down. It's in there somewhere. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, man. That's that's so cool. Let's see if anybody got questions over here. Cause I'll let you go pick up pickles. I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, what do we got over here? Yeah, I love mermaids. I'm sorry. I I I'm, in, I'm intrigued by it. I don't I don't know. Boy, she was, boycott. She was a mermaid. Yeah, she was pretty hot. Yeah, she was. Find it uh, on there. You looking for it? Yeah, I'm looking for it. Boycott MLB. Uh, I like it's, I like it's baseball. It's on my Facebook page too, somewhere way in the back. I'm a baseball fan. I'm sorry. I, my Mets are playing pretty decent baseball. They got the best pitcher in town. Uh, you know, Jacob Degrom is like a but they can't win for him. I just don't get that. Such a talented pitcher. And he, they don't win. They don't win for him. I don't. I don't. You they don't what? score the runs for him. The most money because they don't have the budget they, that the Yankees have. 
Now, now we do. We got a guy named Steve Cohen, this big hedge fund guy, man. So I think it'll be pretty good. Also, I know in a week and a half, I'm going before I let you. A week and a half, I'm going to have a Kentucky Derby. I covered horse racing, right? Anyone you probably know out there knows this. I covered horse racing for like ten years, like. Yeah, really covered it. Um, I'm going to do a, a special Kentucky Derby. I want to give out my picks for the Kentucky Derby. So if anybody's interested before they leave, <laughs> you know what I mean? C- tune in. I'm, it's going to be pretty interesting. I got a guy, a high roller, that's going to pick my bets live on yeah. air. Hey, so, you got it? You got it? No, 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 no. This is right here. This <laughs> right here. Just like you know how to fish, your book, you got your little black and white notebook with all them numbers. It's right, nah, it's right over there. I'm, I'm confident in, in my abilities. You know what I mean? So... Hopefully, people out there can make some money and stuff like that. Uh, Dave, man, I I don't want to keep you too long. You know what I mean? So I don't see any questions popping up over here. So how about NASCAR? How about that one? Yeah, that's a good one. How about NASCAR? No, that that that, that out of all the sports that I watch, uh, baseball, football, ice hockey, ski racing, big ski racing on TV. I love watching that. I'll watch every race throughout the winter and in the World Cup. But I, I don't – I'm not a NASCAR fan. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying if, if I'm home on a Sunday and there's a race on, I'll put the TV on and watch it, but I'll fall asleep like every 10 minutes, wake up and see who's in first, second, third, or, and that's about it. It's, it's just as fast paced as it is, it's too slow paced, too many laps. Yeah, it is. It is a tough one, man. I guess you got to live like uh, south of uh, D.C. to be uh, hardcore yeah. into that. Absolutely. That's 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 a big southern sport. Brian's got a buddy. Brian's got a buddy that uh does he's on that sh- it's an- another pilgrim show. Uh what's his name? Help me out, man. What's the guy's name? He's on uh what show is oh, that? Oh, uh, um Street Outlaws. Street Outlaws. Yeah. That he- show, that show, the ratings on that are very high. That's yeah. a very very popular show. Yeah. And that's been on a while too now. I ca- I can't get into that though. I've watched a few episodes. Yeah, for people that like cars and Racing, I mean, that's that's the show. But yeah, that's the ratings on that. That show is absolutely kicking ass. Let's give you one more before we leave. This is the last one. What's Just up, man? There's Nan. Huge, Hello, huge Nan. Wicked Tuna fan. There's like five yes, or six girls out there, yeah. right? Ladies or whatever you want to uh, So die hard Wicked Tuna fans. It's, it's oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Nan is one of them. Nan, Jeanette, Kathy, Chrissy. Yeah. They're, they're all, they're all, they're all big fans and. You know, hey, it's, it's 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 those guys. You know that that keep the show on the TV. Without the fans, we wouldn't have a show. So shout out to all of you guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for being supportive. And it's nice to see you guys when you come by. Maybe we'll get Nan by one day to say hello, give you a boat tour, and you can meet Calvin. Mm-hmm. Calvin, Calvin down, Klein. Down for, the, down for the count. Calvin, your name is Calvin. What movie is that from? Let's give you Calvin. Calvin no, Klein. Calvin, it's uh, my boat is a Calvin Deal. That's that's the that's the uh, that's the maker Calvin Beal. So he came up with Calvin, and, and I can't take credit for the name. Somebody else just just uh, just came up with the name. We okay. were thinking about buckets, scupper, uh, just anything that was nautical. But Calvin just came out of nowhere, and I said right away, "That's that's the name. We're going to use that one." Good name. So he's he's a good boy. Ten months old, and he's 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 such a good dog. Nice, because honestly, the last time I had you on the show. You just got him. You just got. Yeah. You just got him. So I, I yeah, yeah. It's like this. Yeah, and then I heard the news, and I'm just so happy that Pickles is still, you know, doing his thing, man. That's one thing, man. Happy for Pickles that. Pickles is man. doing good. Pickles goes for his uh, walkabouts, you know, almost every day. I walk over to the neighbor's house. He'll go, go over there and beg. Go play with their dog, and it's time to go get him and bring him back. He's uh, yeah, he's doing well. You know, it's we're every day is a blessing. We're happy to have him. That's mm-hmm. all I could say. Okay, last thing we'll let you go. What's your favorite thing to hunt? And then we'll let you we'll let you run. Deer. Uh, actually, ooh, deer or tuna. I could, we could hunt tuna. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with tuna on that. Nah, I'll hunt no tuna. Brainer. No brainer. Got, Come on. I'll put, uh, I'll, that'll be my number one choice. All right. So we'll tune in Sunday night. It's uh, nine central. Is it nine central? I don't want to say the wrong thing. What time is it on the East Coast? It's n- no, nine. No, nine. It's, uh, what do they? How do they put it? They, nine slash eight, eight central, central. Eight central. Eight central. They, they, they gotta stop yeah. that, man. Put the nine Eastern time. Right. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Um, get up there. We want to see baseball game. Would be awesome, man. I'd love to see. You. Come up there and catch a baseball game with you. That'd be awesome. You can come up and catch tuna, and you can catch a baseball game. There you go. Uh, one thing but I want to gotta bring. What's that? Steak. We will. Oh, we will. Yeah. Yeah, well, on on definitely. ice, on ice, making it up there because I got to <sighs> hand deliver 
uh, I have a horseshoe, and and if uh, Cookie's listening, I saw the last episode. You have the horseshoe hanging, and it's upside down. So flip it up so it can catch the luck. This way, right? Yes, yes. It's got to catch the luck. Catch the luck. I, I I don't know if I saw it in the corner of the picture. And stay off your phones, guys, man. I, I, it drives me crazy. Everybody's on their phone. <laughs> now, but anyway, uh, if anybody wants to get charter anything with you, Tuna, is there anything left in chartering with you? No, Sold out. I, I'm, I'm going through emails. I have probably have a hundred plus people on the wait list. I have, wow. I have absolute, I have zero. Uh, you know, we're fishing daily now for uh, for for haddock, and we'll do that uh, the rest of this month, May and June, the beginning of June, and then the second week of June, all the way through November, it's all tuna, and we have zero dates available. Nothing. So how are we gonna go out? How are we gonna? We have the fish? same people every year. We <laughs> save, we save, uh, we Let's save November. Both. We still charter in November, but we save a lot of dates in November just for us and to take some friends out and to take some of our good customers out. We have some customers now that have been fishing with us for 20 plus years. Wow. So that's a long time. So, yeah. you know, we'll always invite them up late fall, hop on the boat, bring two, three people, no more. It's a freebie. Come on up. Hey, thanks for fishing with us. This is our way of, you know, showing our gratitude. That's awesome. Cause That's they, cool. they were there before you were anything, yeah, before you guys were on TV and stuff like that, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. Listen, Dave, man, thank you so much for coming on, taking your time at your busy schedule, man. And uh, will the price go up and tune out a little bit as the season goes on? Hint? Don't, don't know. No, don't. Tune in. Still, tune we're in. still in uncharted waters, you know. Don't. It's, uh, you know. Things are a little bit better here, but I know overseas, you know, it's you know, we got the vaccine here. They don't really have the vaccine over there as much as we do here in I still think we're in recovery mode here, obviously, and I think they still have a long way to go overseas. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't have the answer to that. I'm not even going to guess, but we're going to go out and we're going to fish. We're going to get the prices we get, and we're going to we're just happy to be alive and healthy and, and make it a few bucks. That's all we could ask for right now. Right. That's it, man. You see Tyler, you tell him that Buck's looking for him because you don't answer my messages, please, okay? <laughs> all right. Thank you. This is uh, – Right here, tuna.com. You see him on the National Geographic Wicked Tuna on Sunday nights. Thank you so and much, Jess, Dave. And What's Bacon, if you're on here, I got to give the shout out to Jess and Bacon. They're down in Lauderdale, probably slamming beers, having a good time. And you're all alone, awesome. right? You're all lonely now, I'm right? All alone, but I still got my pal here. There you go, man. And you can watch uh, your Red Sox lose tonight, probably, if they're playing. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, bud. See you Thank guys. You, Dave. I see you around, Dave. Going, Always Thanks, a pleasure, man. Class act, brother. Class act. Thanks, brother. Later, brother. All right, you guys, man. If you could do me a favor, bug the system. If you could follow it or share it, it would be an honor. Uh, we're also looking for sponsorships. If anybody wants a sponsor, we could throw you up there, make commercial stuff like that. Uh, Wicked Tuna is our show, so we have some. You know, we'll definitely have some more guys come on the show. So everybody out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Please share. Also, go to YouTube. We have a YouTube channel out. If you don't like watching it on Facebook, we do add it to YouTube so you can watch it there. We'll, that's the two options right now. Click so. like, subscribe, send it out to people. And I will Let try to win. I will try to win you some money the Kentucky Derby this year. So if you tune in, keep it. Uh, just go to my Facebook page. I'll let you know. Thank you, guys. And uh, that was Captain Dave. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Let's go. Have a good night, guys. Later. Let's say good night. Right, we out. Thanks for listening to Buck the System. Next time, Buck Gratano will do it all again, and we hope you'll join us for the ride. In the meantime, you can reach out to us at buckthesystempodcast at gmail.com. With questions, comments, suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. Our email address again is buckthesystempodcast at gmail.com. We'll see you next time on Buck the System.